Hi guys, it's Ben here, and on the day in which Manchester United completed the £75 million signing of Romelu Lukaku from Everton, is now the time in which Liverpool will start splashing the cash. So Romelu Lukaku has left Everton, he is a Manchester United player, it's a huge deal for United, they've beaten Chelsea to the signing of the Belgian. This comes just one day after Wayne Rooney left United to join his former club Everton again. And we are starting to see a bit of movement now, Lacazette joined Arsenal last week, Antonio Rudiger has now joined Chelsea. Now of course Liverpool have already signed Mohamed Salah but we know that they need some more players and they have a link with several other players. It's now the time that the ball's going to start rolling, has momentum started to pick up in this window and could we see some significant movement this week on the Van Dijk and Cater deals as well as other ones that we're supposedly working on. Now I put out on Instagram story today asking you guys to let me know what you want me to talk about on this video and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Make sure you are following me at Ben Might Say on Instagram. There's always stuff like this going on. We do a lot of lives on there. It's very interactive. Get involved. So Emery Chan World asks, should we break the bank like Everton and United? Well I think if we're going to get Van Dijk, if we're going to get Cater, we're going to have to break the bank somewhat depending on your definition of that. We are going to have to spend upwards of 50, 60 million on both of those players individually. And those deals are both a lot tougher to pull off than Lukaku to United. Everton and were sort of resigned to selling him. There are some people that seem to be quite worried about Everton. I, for one, am not that concerned. I mean, Jordan Pickford, Michael Keane, they're not really players that we were in for. They haven't beaten us to those signings. If they were to sign Van Dijk, then yes, I'd be worried. If they were to sign someone that's actually as good as Lukaku to replace him, then I'd be concerned. But they signed Wayne Rooney, who's on the way out as far as I'm concerned. He hasn't been right for years now. USA 1943 also wants me to talk about Wayne Rooney. I'm just not concerned about him. I don't think he's going to be that great for Everton. I think it's quite admirable that he's gone to Everton rather than a bigger money move to China or MLS or wherever. But he's obviously not going to be anywhere near as effective as Lukaku was. I'm not sure if he's a replacement for him or whether he's just an extra bit of experience, a bit of squad depth for them. And the other signings, David Klass and Sandro Ramirez, I'm just not that worried. They're not players that Liverpool are looking at. They're not players that are in that elite level. So yes, they're spending money. Yes, that's great for them. But they're losing the Lukaku and I'll probably lose Barkley too. So I'm not actually sure whether their squad at the start of the season will be as good as it was at the start of last season. As for United, fair play, Lukaku's a huge signing for them and one that I think really makes them up with the favourites for the Premier League title this season. But I think a lot of their business will happen in August, just like I think a lot of Liverpool's business will. I think a lot of the deals they're going for are big ones with clubs that don't want to sell. Fabinho won't be easy, Perisic has proved to not be easy, so I think there's a long way to go for them too. Rory McGinn mentions that James Rodriguez has reportedly been offered around and Liverpool have turned down the chance to buy him for £66 million. This is a story that came out in an outlet called Sport in Spain. To be honest, I don't blame us for turning that down. He's obviously a great player, plays for Real Madrid, he's won loads of trophies in his time, but I just don't think that sort of player is exactly what Liverpool are looking for. We've got Coutinho, we've got loads of players in that sort of position that create for a bit deeper. And with those mega wages, I just think Liverpool should leave that player alone. I don't blame them at all for not signing him. Rory also mentions Van Dijk, and so does Cami Smythe. He's gone on Southampton's pre-season tour today. We're still having to wait and see with him. It's going to take time, it may take a transfer request. Am I confident? Kind of. I, I, I don't know. I think if he is going to leave Southampton this summer, it is going to be to Liverpool. He's made that clear to the club, as reported in the Mirror. Trey Lagos commented on my last video about this Van Dijk situation and how he tells Southampton that he wants to go to Liverpool. But whether he is the sort of character to kick up a fuss and push a deal through, I just don't know. That all depends on how he is as a guy. He's 26 years of age. Is now a time where he kind of needs to progress his career. He's about to come into his peak years and who knows how long that will last for him. So this is probably the summer that he has to make his move if he wants to have a long, sustainable career at the highest level. Isaiah Maynard wants to know what Liverpool chances of signing Van Dijk and Keita are so just touched on Van Dijk in terms of Keita again it's very much wait and see is he going to force through the move in terms of Van Dijk and Keita I think both transfers are very much in the players court I think if it comes to us paying 60-70 million and I know I've got a lot of people that watch this channel that don't like FSG but I think if it comes down to it Liverpool will pay the 60, 70 million to get these deals done. It's just a case of whether the players will want to tell their club to sell. I think if they go in and say, I won't play for you, I, I want to go to Liverpool, my head's been turned, I'm not interested in playing here, I want to get the big money, I think that could be the difference. But I think if the clubs say to the players, look, we just want one more year out of you, you can move next summer. Depends on what sort of guy the player is, he might accept that. And that's the case with both Van Dijk and Keita. So at the moment, they're both a toss of a coin for me. I think we will end up getting one of them. If you were to push me <laughs> on which one, I'd probably at the moment go with Van Dijk. But that changes every day, so you know, don't take my word on that. If we don't get either of those players, I think it's important not to panic by, especially with Keita, because we are quite oversubscribed in midfield. We have got a lot of numbers, especially if we can get Emre Chan to sign a new deal and stay on. We've got Henderson, Chan, Vinaldum, Lalana, Coutinho, Grujic in reserve, Lucas is still around. We're not desperate for another one. We could look at Mateo Kovacic, who might be available, or maybe William Cavalia, who's going to be itching for a move. He's 25 himself. Now, I put a poll up on my Twitter today in regards to the midfield, asking if you'd happily let Emre Chan leave the third 
30 million if it meant we get Kaiko for 70. And 59% of you said no, that most people want Chan to stay, even if that means not getting Naby Kaito. So I think overall everyone's pretty happy with the midfield. Kaito would obviously transform it completely, an incredible player, but it's not quite as important as Van Dyke. As far as centre back's concerned, it's going to be tough to get one anywhere near as good as Van Dyke. So in that regard, he is probably the most important out of the two top Liverpool targets that we get. A couple of you wanted to talk about fullbacks, so Andrew Robertson, who could be signing, and perhaps where John Flanagan might fit into this side. In terms of Robertson, I think that is a transfer that will take place. I think it's going to be as simple as Moreno leave to Serie A or La Liga. Robertson's ready to come in and I'm more than happy with that. In terms of Flanagan, he's kind of become a forgotten figure. He was obviously great in the 13-14 season at left back. Then he got the big injury and it didn't quite work out for him at Burnley last season. But look, it's all going to come down to what he does in pre-season. If he impresses Klopp on the tour and in training, then I don't see any reason why he wouldn't keep him around. He's a scouse lad, he loves the club, it's important to have one of those guys around. We know he's capable of playing at a decent level as he's done it for us before. It's just whether he can recover after that injury, whether he is going to be anywhere near the same. But I think Trent Alexander-Arnold will be competing for a first team place this season, especially as we're fighting on four fronts. Some are even thinking you might dislodge Klein at some point, I'm not so sure, but you know, I'd love to see a youngster get a good go. YNWA Edit says that apparently Liverpool are making a sign and that's gonna blow supporters' minds. And Yusuf wanted me to talk about the quietness during the window, so I guess this sort of ties in. Do we want to hear regular reports about who we're linked with and who we're looking at signing, or do we just want people to get on with it behind the scenes and then we just suddenly find out an announcement's about to take place. I think it's great that we're going to finally have some football to talk about from Wednesday night. We're going to actually have some pre-season games to look at and we'll have something to occupy us other than just transfer rumours because there haven't really been as many as usual this summer. We're normally seeing you know, Italian papers linked us with various players and we see reports in Spain and Portugal and everywhere else. It's kind of just been Van Dijk, Keita, Robertson, Oxley, chamberlain and a couple of others this summer. And I don't mind that. It stops us getting our hopes up about things that we're not even, even linked with. I mean, the Kovacic stuff a couple of years ago was all nonsense apparently so I think we can all be pretty certain that the guys that we're being linked with are sort of three or four main targets it's pretty much it and then there are some plan B's in there but hopefully it doesn't come to that. LFC.YNWA124 asks about Sturridge. Obviously it looks like he's staying. Hopefully he can stay fit and challenge Firmino for that number nine position. I think they can both score plenty of goals. We've got four competitions, as I said. Both are going to be very important for Liverpool this season. And AI22 asks how we're going to do in all the competitions. I think in the league, we have to be looking at top four again. I mean, obviously we want to win the league, but it's going to be very, very tough with United and City spending all the money they are. Even Arsenal look like they're going to strengthen well this season. Spurs keep progressing under Pochettino and Chelsea are going to be defending that title. So it's going to be very tough to even stay in the top four. But as I said on a recent Instagram live, if we can get Van Dijk and Keita in, I see no reason why we can't be serious, serious title challengers. I really, really do think that. If that spine of the team can be as strong as it would be with those guys in, I think we can do it. And then I think in the other competitions as well, our squad's going to be much stronger. Guys like Lallana, Vinalda, Marigi and Chan and whoever, they're all going to be on the bench. I mean, imagine how strong our second string is going to be. I think we can get quite far in the FA Cup. I think we should be looking at at least semi-finals. About time we won a trophy. It's been too long. We're not winning enough trophies as a club and that's something that Klopp will be aware of, something he'll want to address. Champions League, look, we're good against the big sides. That's all I'll say. We're good against the big sides. We're good in Europe traditionally. It's Liverpool Football Club. Who knows? Who knows? I think we can definitely get out of the group stages and then the rest could well be history. Leave a comment with some suggestions as to alternatives that we could go for if either Van Dijk or Keita falls through. I want to know who you think we should go for as a plan B. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. We will be back tomorrow rounding up the day's news and looking ahead to the first pre-season friendly which is on Wednesday against Tranmere Rovers. And follow my other socials. It's Ben Might Say on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook. I'm active on all of those and I'll see you next time.